In this video series, I'm going to show you how to get started in home automation with a simple project that will allow you to control your lights and other devices in your house. One popular home automation project that many people start with is controlling their lights. There's great satisfaction that comes with being able to control your lights using your own electronics and code. However, a major roadblock for many people is the realization that they have to work with high voltage, which can be dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. In reality, working with high voltage and high current that can be found in your house is not as difficult as you may think. If you're not familiar with how the electricity in your house works, I encourage you to spend a few minutes researching the topic on the internet, but make sure that you get your information from a reputable source. Now, I'm not claiming to be an expert in this topic, but I did work as an electrician when I was a teenager, and I do have a degree in electrical engineering. In a future video, I'll show you how to control your lights and your appliances in your house without having to mess with high voltage. It's a pretty neat little trick, and I'm excited to share it with you. There are several ways you could tackle the problem of controlling a light in your house. The first and definitely most popular approach is to use a relay to switch the voltage on and off. The lights in your house are connected to a mechanical switch that you have to toggle on and off with your hand. A relay does the same thing as the switch on the wall, except that instead of toggling the switch on and off with your hand, you can do it with low voltage and low current electricity. You can buy relays from the usual places like Amazon, eBay, Adafruit, and SparkFun, but if you don't mind waiting a few weeks, the cheapest place to buy them is definitely eBay. I recommend getting ones like this that are soldered to a breakout board. You can get them as single relays, or some even come as two relays, four, or even eight relays all on one board. I'm going to use this board with two relays, even though I'm going to only use one of those channels. So let's get started. We need to plug whatever it is we're trying to control, in this case the lamp, into the relay. We also need to supply power from the wall to the relay. The relay will act as a switch and it needs to sit in between the lamp and the wall. To help me do this, I'm going to use a short extension cord. Now I purchased this on Amazon in a pack of five, but if you have an extra one lying around, feel free to use that. Do not plug the extension cord into the wall at any point during the next steps. So the first thing I'm going to do is cut the extension cord in half, and I'm going to strip back the outer insulation about three inches on each side. Now when I'm cutting through this, I want to be sure not to cut all the way through and damage the inner wires. Next, I'll take my strippers and strip off about a half an inch or so. This particular extension cord has three wires in it. Green is ground, white is neutral, and black is line. Now, some people might use different names, but that's the names I'm gonna use for this video. You're gonna take our wire nuts and we're gonna reconnect the ground and neutral wires together. So we should be left with just the black wires exposed. Next we're going to connect the black wires to the relay. Now most relays will have three terminals on one side. The center one is typically the common terminal, then you have a normally open and a normally closed terminal. We can test which one is which by putting our multimeter in continuity mode. And that way when we touch the ends of the leads together, when we hear that beeping noise, that means that the two connectors are electrically connected or they're conductive. When I touch the center terminal and the outside terminal, I don't hear a beep. That means that these two points are not connected together right now. So that tells me that that's the normally open terminal. Now when I touch the probe to the other terminal, that should be the normally closed terminal, so I expect to hear a beep. And now we've confirmed which one is normally open and which one is normally closed. So we want to connect the remaining two black wires to the common and normally open terminals. So now our relay looks like this. We have the two black wires screwed in up top on the common terminal and the normally open terminal. If you look closely down at the bottom, you'll see four pins. The far left is ground, and the far right is VCC. Now the two inner pins are the N1 and N2. Those are the control pins for both of the relays. We're gonna be using N2. So what we wanna do is connect a ground wire to the ground pin and five volts to VCC, and then connect a third wire to N2. 
I'm going to be using a breadboard power supply to do this. So first I connect the ground wire to the ground pin. Next I connect 5 volts to VCC. And finally I connect our signal wire to N2. The way this relay is set up is in order to activate it we have to bring the signal pin down to ground and to deactivate it we leave it unconnected or to 5 volts. When I connect the signal wire to ground we should hear a click which means that the relay is activated. We heard the click and we saw the light come on so we know that the relay is now activated. Now when I release the signal pin from ground we should see the light go off and hear another click. Now the relay is deactivated. The way this works is the exact same way as a light switch. When I enable the relay, the two black wires are connected and whatever is plugged into the female end should turn on. When I deactivate the relay, the two black wires are now disconnected which means whatever is plugged into the female end will turn off. This is it. Don't get scared now. Okay, now is the moment of truth. Is this thing going to work? Okay, so I have my desk lamp here, and I'm going to plug it into the female end of the extension cord. Next, I'm going to take the male end of the extension cord. I'm going to make sure everything looks good, and plug the male end into the wall outlet. Now I can take my signal wire, and when I touch it to ground, the lamp should come on. Alright, now I take it out, and the lamp will go off. Go ahead and try plugging something else into it but make sure you don't exceed the current rating of your relay. This particular relay can handle loads of up to 10 amps, so I'm not gonna be able to plug in anything heavy duty like a refrigerator or a vacuum cleaner. Okay, to sum up this video, one method of controlling your lights or other devices in your house is to use a relay. A relay is a switch that can be controlled using small electrical control signals. By connecting a short extension cord, you can plug in almost any device and control the voltage being supplied to that device, thus allowing you to turn it on and off. If you were going to deploy this into the wild, I would recommend putting it into an enclosure like I did here. For now, we're activating this relay by manually moving the control signal. However, in my next video, I'll show you several ways to electronically activate the relay. I will show you how to turn your lamp on when it gets dark in the room, or even when somebody passes by. Thanks for watching.